everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sven and I hope you're doing great. With Resolve 17 we got the old Color Warper and now with Resolve 20 they revised the tool and gave us an incredible update. So let's look at the new Chroma Warp mode and compare it to the old Color Warper models. And while we're at it, let's also look at a few hidden features. The Color Warper is a tool that can be useful for specific hue adjustments. It can help you fix problematic colors but also create complex new color palettes. The old models that we had with Resolve 17, however, introduced a bunch of problems that we should talk about. Before we begin, we have to understand how it operates behind the scenes. It is one of the tools in Resolve that is always color space aware, so if you want to know what that means, check out the video linked above or in the video description. In short, the tool operates in its internal tool color space, which we can select down here. And in order to work properly, it has to know the timeline color space. So in our project settings, we have to make sure this is tagged correctly. We can see here how it creates a different result in the timeline that is tagged in Rec. 709 scene and one that is in DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. Now the tool by default works in HSP, which is similar to HSV and HSL, however it claims to give you a more perceptually uniform representation of the colors. We can select the other models here too, but HSP seems to work the best in most cases. With the spiderweb overlay, we can now move colors based on points on the grid. And you can go quite extreme with this right away. For example, you could move this red point all the way over to the blue area, which obviously doesn't look good, but that's possible. And when we look at this on a test pattern, we can also see another problem. Besides not looking aesthetic, it also heavily breaks the image even with the slightest adjustments. It is mostly due to the conversions from our timeline color space, which is a lock encoded color space like DaVinci Intermediate here, to the tool color space and back at the end. If our timeline was in a display color space such as Rec. 709 scene, the conversions wouldn't have such a drastic effect. Does that mean we should tag the timeline as Rec. 709 scene? No, not at all. It simply means you should be more careful when using this tool. A correct timeline color space tag is way more important for other color space aware tools. Okay, but this was the old model. What about the Chroma Warp? With Resolve 20 we finally got an update to the tool and it's quite obvious where they got the inspiration from. Last year Baselight 6 was announced, which is an absolutely incredible but very expensive color grading software, mainly used in high budget premium color grading studios. And in Baselight 6 they introduced the X-Grade tool, which is just amazingly powerful. Now this year Resolve 20 came out, and already we have a similar tool with the Chroma Warp mode. So how is it different from the Color Warper? First of all, we don't have to choose between HSP, HSV, etc. It just works in one specific model. Which one? I don't know, but that doesn't matter too much. What is more important is that we don't manipulate the colors based on a grid, but on brush strokes instead. There are two different types here, the normal mode and the point-to-point -point mode. We add those strokes by simply clicking in the UI and dragging in a direction. The first mode is basically pushing all the colors that are in the way in this direction. And it can get quite extreme easily, but we will see later how this is still way cleaner than the old models. The point-to-point -point mode behaves similarly, however, it essentially lets you pick a color range and drop it somewhere else without affecting the colors in between. So, for example, we could lift this red color and drop it over here in the green range, but all the yellow colors in between are staying yellow. Unlike the normal mode that would push all the yellow colors towards green as well. And by the way, we can switch the mode of an existing stroke easily with the buttons down here. A third type is the pinpoint that lets us define ranges that should not at all be affected. We can, for example, place such a point in the center of the UI to fix our neutrals. So everything with low to no saturation. Or we could put one on our skin tones. And by the way, we can also create all of these points in the viewer as well. Simply click on the color you want to select and drag it wherever you want. Besides the graph, we also see a few sliders that let us adjust the ranges. The chroma range is especially important as it broadens or narrows the selected stroke. So a bigger range of course affects more colors and smoothens out the transitions. And another slider here is incredibly useful, the exposure slider. It allows us to brighten or darken a selected range, and if we hover over a stroke in the UI, we can actually modify both of these parameters. Scrolling the mouse wheel affects the chroma range, and holding Ctrl or Command and scrolling affects the exposure. So this makes using the tool much more convenient than going over to the sliders. We can also hold Alt or Option while clicking to preview the range we are selecting, and this one works in the viewer as well. So one use case for this tool would be to easily tame a highly saturated color by pushing it back towards the center. Another idea would be to create a custom color palette and I find it to be much more helpful having multiple points with very big chroma ranges and only slight adjustments than going the other way around. Another trick I found is to simply click in the UI without drawing a stroke in a direction. 
Now you can define the chroma range and only modify the exposure. So you could place the stroke at a highly saturated color and lower the exposure to get some sort of color density. Create multiple of these points and you can drastically change the image's contrast based on the selected hues. So we saw in some of the examples how the transitions between the colors are already way smoother than with the old models. And to prove a point, let's just look at the test patterns from my generator DCTL again. And by the way, you can get this one for free or pay what you want on my website and the link is in the video description. So we saw how the old model broke transitions between highly saturated colors and we can also see how the chroma warp on the other hand handles those way better. So let me know if you used the chroma warp before and if you're going to after watching this video. If you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing to not miss out on upcoming episodes and check out the DCTLs on my website. As I said, you can get the generator for free or pay what you want. It really helps out the channel. But until then, I will see you in the next video.